Raise your hands if you have a pet dog. Think and picture a dog you saw on the street. Picture your favorite artwork. You might wonder why I'm asking you to think of things that are somewhat distinct from each other, but this quest will show you how they're both connected to me. Let's start off with dogs first, then we'll move on to arts later. Does anyone know how many dogs live in Bali in 2020? According to Bali's provincial government, the island's dog population has grown significantly during the pandemic, from 573,000 in 2019 to 649,000 in 2020, an increase of more than 13%. Chances are, you may have seen stray or uncared for dogs somewhere out on the street. The pandemic has had a significant impact on the island, particularly on dog care in Bali. There are numerous reasons why individuals no longer want their dogs or are unable to care for them. For example, with so many out of work, people are saying, why should I feed my dog when I can't even feed my children? So they dump them on the street. Said Trezabel Hutasoit, an Indonesian commercial and internet copywriter who has adopted 10 stray dogs. Furthermore, the majority of Balinese people utilize their dogs as alarms and guardians for their homes or locations. Imade Chandra, the head of veterinary public health at Bali's Department of Agriculture and Food Security, believes that the root cause of the island's stray dog problem is that locals keep male dogs for security at their homes, but throw away female dogs because they don't want new litters of puppies. In the last few months, I took a swimming lesson at a swimming pool located in Vlakio. When I arrived, I noticed a lot of dogs roaming around, and I wasn't sure if they were stray or had an owner. While I was swimming, my mother stayed at the pool's entrance and spoke with Ibujero and Pakagung, who are the owners of the warung, about the dogs there, saying that the dogs they are caring for are dogs that, people, that random people abandon at their place and also that they found on the street. Before that, I would love to tell you about her. This is Ibujero. She owns a warung at a swimming pool located in Blackio and currently takes care of 18 stray dogs. Sadly, not all of these dogs are in good condition. Some of them have skin illness and wounds. And of course, to cure this illness and to feed these poor dogs, it requires quite a lot of funding. It gave me inspiration for my quest project. I wonder what I could do to help keep these dogs healthy and nourished because I believe taking care of 18 dogs is not easy. These 18 do stray dogs are just the tip of the iceberg. I see stray dogs in need almost every day out on the street and also public places. I chose to help dogs because I've always lived with dogs in my house, which makes me see them as friends rather than just pets. Other than that, in the Balinese culture, we believe in trihitakarana, which means three causes of well-being, consisting of three parts, one, parahyangan, harmonious relationship between humans and God. Second, pawangan, relationship between humans. And palamahan, relationship between humans and na their natural environment, including dogs. According to this Trihitakarana belief, we need to have harmonious relationship with, with dogs as well. But abandoning and letting dogs suffer doesn't follow this culture. Saving stray dogs could also prevent the spread of diseases and viruses either from dogs to other dogs or animals and also from dogs to humans. I began to consider how I could link this issue to my autistic interest. I've always enjoyed drawing since I was, I was a child and if I see a blank surface such as the wall at my house, I would grab my crayons and begin scribbling random lines and circles and whatever else that came to mind. When I went to green school, I met several of my friends who are really excellent artists, and I really want to become like them as well. So then I participated in drawing classes at school and bought my own sketchbook so I could draw more often. Since then, I've been wanting to explore something new, which is digital art. I've seen a lot of videos on digital arts on social media, which makes me more interested in it. Fortunately, I was able to persuade my parents enough and bought my digital drawing device and also the app that I've always wanted to try. After all the practices, these are some of my digital artworks. <laughs> the 
This is how I got the idea for my quest, Art for Animals. Art for Animals. <laughs> what is Art for Animals? The primary goal of this project is to raise funds for Ibu Joro, who I mentioned before, by selling products with hand-printed hand-drawn printed designs on them, and using 80% of the profits to donate to Ibujuro. These are some of the products I sell. I sell tote bags, stickers, and also keychains. On the 11th of February, I started my Instagram account, Art for Animals, and keep on posting every time I launch a new product. Additionally, I sold at Green School events such as the Spirit Fridays, pop-up markets, and also the Woe Festival. This is one of the most unique projects I've ever done. Why? Because I could combine my passion and actually help a world issue with it. This is, in my opinion, one of the most serious issues in Bali. And one of the SDGs that addresses it is SDG 15, Life on Land. Even though the SDG information states that their main goal is to save the ecosystem and wild animals, it's also important to consider that there are stray dogs who need help and also people who are willing to care for them. During this quest journey, I did many research making me learn new things about dogs, including their population. Of course, there are always challenges in every process, and my quest certainly has its own. Throughout this quest journey, I was struggling. I was struggling to get my products done and market my business. So after these tough challenges, I decided to connect and met with one of the marketing team. Her name is Cleo. And she gave me amazing advice on how to market my business further and, of course, better. I then made a poster and advertised it via the Green School newsletter. Also, at the start of the project, I met with one of the Green School Foundation team, Ibu Chandra. She helped me to think of products that I could possibly sell on my business, such as what kind of tote bags I should um, sell and the designs. I found many things that helped me grow as a person. One of them is getting out of my comfort zone. I met and connected with many new people that I've never talked to before. Besides, I became much better independent by managing most of my quest times and to-do lists without getting reminders regularly and became more responsible. So far, I successfully made more than five designs and raised over 500,000 rupiah from 80% of my profit and also from the people who kindly donated. But this is not the end. I will continue this business and add more products as well. This project is truly meaningful for me, and I hope I can help more unfortunate stray dogs in Bali. I hope all of us here can be more aware of this issue and hopefully do something about it as well. Some of the ways you could do this is one, by adopting stray dogs. Two, you can donate to a stray dog shelter. Or three, you could buy something from my business. <laughs> Before I end the speech, I would love to share a quote that had helped me throughout this journey by Mahatma Gandhi. Be the change you want to see in the world. I also love to share my gratitude to all of the people who, who had helped me throughout this quest journey. My friends and family have been very supportive, and of course, all the Quest teachers and mentors for giving me feedbacks and insights. Thank you all so much for buying my products and supporting my business. So what are you waiting for? Let's be the change and help these stray dogs. Thank you.